Got another paper three question for you. So this one just focuses on enthalpy changes. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. And I hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, please think about subscribing to the channel. So the first thing I've done is just process the mass readings and temperature readings. So the mass of calcium chloride that's been used is the difference between these two numbers, so 9.28 grams. The mass of the solution that's been heated up is the difference between these two, so that's 106.6 grams. And the temperature change is an increase. It's important because it obviously means it's an exothermic enthalpy change of solution is 18.5 degrees C. So the first thing we're doing is calculating Q, the energy that's gone into the water using MC delta T, mass of solution 106.6, um, specific heat capacity C for the solution will totally be the same as water, so 4.18, and there's that temperature rise. So that gives that many joules, but we need to put it into kilojoules. Next thing we do is work out the moles of calcium chloride dissolved, so that's the mass over the MR, so that many moles were dissolved. And the enthalpy change of solution is the Q in kilojoules divided by the moles, so it comes out at minus, don't forget your sign, exothermic remember, so minus 98.69 kilojoules per mole. So now we've got that enthalpy change of solution, we can put the values into a cycle. So I'll just quickly go through the cycle and then we'll put the numbers in. So we've got the lattice enthalpy for the calcium chloride. So that's going from the gaseous ions to the solid lattice. So that's that value there. The enthalpy change of solution we've just calculated is this one here. So it goes down because it's exothermic. So that's going from the solid lattice to the aqueous ions. And then down the other side, we've got the two hydration enthalpies. So just keep an eye on your state symbols. So you can see I've gone from calcium 2 plus gaseous to calcium 2 plus aqueous. So that's the enthalpy change of hydration for the calcium 2 plus ions. And then this arrow here, we've got two chloride ions, gaseous, going to two chloride ions, aqueous. So that's going to be two times the enthalpy change of hydration for the chloride ions. So I'll just put the numbers in the cycle and then talk through the calculation. So there's the numbers in there. I'm just saying X for the one we're trying to calculate, the enthalpy change of hydration for calcium 2 plus. And don't forget that you have to double this one here because there's two moles of chloride ions in the cycle. So for the calculation, there's a couple of ways to do it. So I'll show you both and see which you prefer. So you can do sort of a straightforward Hess's law treatment of the cycle. So you've got this route down the left hand side starts and finishes where it does is going to be equal to this one here because they both start and finish at the same place and then we just solve for the one we want which is the x so that gives us these numbers here and we just solve for that by taking this over to the other side which gives us an answer of minus 1566 kilojoules per mole so the other way you can do it is what I call the vector approach. So we want this arrow here, this enthalpy change here. So that's our start point, that's our finish point. So we, if we go round this way and just follow the arrow directions, you can see that we can go down there. So that value there, plus that one there, minus this one, because this arrow is pointing down we want to go up so that plus that minus that which is effectively what we've done here but it kind of it's not so obvious so whichever way you prefer totally fine so long as you get the right answer minus 1566 kilojoules per mole so moving on to part b it's a bit awkward this one i think sort of getting your head around what they're doing so Fuel's been developed using a one-to-one -one molar ratio of octane and ethanol. So I've written up the formulae of the two um, fuels that are making up the fuel. So you could either treat these as separate things in the equation. What I did was I just added the atoms together and just came up with the overall molecular formula for the fuel. So if you add the carbons, the hydrogens and the oxygen, you get a fuel with the formula C10H24O. And all we need to do now is just react that with oxygen completely. 
So we're going to make carbon dioxide and H2O and then just balance it. So 10 C's means 10 CO2s. 24 H's means 12 H2O's. And we just need to balance the oxygens now. So we've got on the right hand side, we've got 10 times 2 is 20 plus 12, 32 oxygens on the right. There's one in the fuel, so we need 31. So I just would put a top heavy fraction in there. 31 over 2, or you could go 15 and a half if you want. So moving on to the calculation, we've got to calculate the energy released by the complete combustion of 8 kilograms of the fuel. So you can see all I've done here, it's kind of created a little equation for what's happened to generate the fuel. Um, so if we've got 8 kilos of this, we can work out the MR of that and then work out how many moles we've got. So 8 kilos is 8,000 grams. The MR of the fuel is 160. So there's 50 moles of fuel. So the, the reason I've done this equation is if I can go right, so I've got 50 moles of fuel. Now the ratio is one to one. So if I've got 50 moles of fuel, I must have had 50 moles of each of the sort of components. That's how it made sense to me anyway. So now we know that, we've got the enthalpy change of combustion for each of the fuels. So we can just multiply that by 50 and that by 50, add them together and that's going to give us the overall um, energy released. Which comes out at 341850 kilojoules and just want to say very well done if you got that right because I think that is tricky.